When I became a Christian in college, I remember getting the message and hearing about Jesus and being excited for my faith. And then uh, talking to the pastor, I said, well, what do I do now? And he said, when you die, you know, you get to go to heaven and that's a, a tremendous gift. And then I thought about it and I said, well, I didn't didn't really get my question answered. What do I do now? Like, what am I supposed to do for the next 50, 60, 70 years of my life? You know, the Bible's not always clear about what to do, but sometimes it is clear about how to live. And that's why in the book of Philippians, we get so many great principles. In fact, Paul gives us one of the most clear and concise ways of what it means to live out our salvation. And so let me give you those clear, concise uh, principles that are you going to be able to live your life with effectively until you do go get to meet Jesus. The first principle to live by is obedience. Hold on a second. I know sometimes that can be a little bit religious to say obedience, but think about it like this. Uh, you ever go to Ikea and uh, you put together some furniture? I know I have way too many times. If you ever pull out the instruction manual, here's what I know about Ikea furniture. Sticking to the Ikea instruction manual for that piece of furniture is absolutely necessary. One missed skill and that piece of furniture is going to come crumbling down within days, especially if you have small children. The same is true for obedience. We're oftentimes gonna get into our lives and things weren't gonna be going right and we might even blame God. God, what are you doing? Why aren't you, why aren't you saving me? Why don't I have the relationship I want? Why, why don't I have the amount of money I want? Why isn't church going the way I thought? And if you're not following that manual, if you're not being obedient to what God has asked you to do in the first place, then you have to look at and see how well you were being obedient to him in the first place. So you've gotta be obedient, that's principle number one. Principle number two is intentionality. Paul says in Philippians 2, work out your salvation. That means you've gotta be intentional about working out your salvation. Many of us sometimes think, hey, I meet Jesus and then things will start happening and I will start growing in the faith and I wanna read the Bible more and I wanna love my wife and husband more and things will just get better for me. Well, actually, that's not true. And it's funny, we do take that principle in almost every other area of life. We think if we wanna be good at work, we've gotta work hard. We want to be good with school, we've got to study. If we want to be good parents, we got to love our children. Uh, we think if we want to get in shape, we've got to eat right and exercise. We think that everything takes work, except sometimes for our faith. Our faith takes work too. And so you have to be intentional about working out your salvation. Third thing is a healthy fear. Now, a lot of us associate fear with like horror movies and being afraid, but that's not what we're talking about here. Fear in the context of the Bible is a healthy reverence and awe, a respect. That's what we have to have for God. Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That means we wanna look at God, and while we work out our salvation with intentionality, we wanna look at God with a healthy reverence and awe for him, knowing that, hey, this is the man who created the world. I wanna be uh, strict with what he asked me to do, and I love him and he loves me, and so I wanna work out my life with a healthy fear. So you've gotta have that for God. The next principle is positivity. Positivity is so important. Philippians 2, Paul says, uh, avoid grumbling and complaining. And this was the problem with Israel. All throughout history, if they were known for anything, it was complaining and grumbling. That's what got them into so much trouble. So you have to ask yourself the question, where is grumbling and complaining got you into trouble? Where is your lack of gratitude for the life that you've been given caused you to complain and grumble and caused you to not make the friendships you should have made, not take the chances you should have taken, not be obedient to what God was calling you to do in that mission? We've got to look at life with positivity because if we if we are positive and we are grateful for the life God has given us, then we're acknowledging the fact that God is the one that gave us this life. It wasn't us who built it. And so no matter what happens, if the foundation is gratitude, life is always going to go the way that leads us into the greatest amount of joy because gratitude is the foundation. The last principle, make your life count. Make your life count. Uh, Paul says in uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 16, he talks about this idea of not wanting the Philippians faith uh, to falter so that his work wasn't in vain. And there are going to be people in your life that are going to serve you, care for you, hold you up, be in your corner when no one else was. You want to be able to make their work count. I want to be able to make my mother's work count that she put into me as a child. I want. I know that you want to make your parents' work count, your brother's work count, your teacher, your coach's work count. And so you're going to have to be intentional, living a congruent life with positivity, with a healthy fear of God, and that's going to lead you to making your life in Christ count.